Good evening and welcome to Tuesday evening on Raconteurs News. Thanks for the great tunes there for the warm up, Luby. Um, I hope you all enjoyed that and I hope you're all in the mood for uh, what promises to be a great evening. Um, we've got something really, really special lined up for you. Quite groundbreaking for Raconteurs. Um, but uh, as always, uh, I'm joined by Jason. Good evening, Jason. How's things with you, mate? Hello there, Andy, and hello, everybody. Yeah, everything's uh, hunky-dory, smashing, ship-shape, and Bristol fashion over this end of Yorkshire. Oh, excellent. So, uh, yeah, we've got quite a diversity of accents tonight. I mean, we've got me and thee. We, well, apparently, we've got similar accents, David reckoned, on Thursday night, but I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we've got a, a Brummie accent joining us now, and that's uh, Andrew K. Fletcher. Good evening, Andrew. Good evening. I love you. No, it's a black country accent. Oh, oh, oh my, my apologies. See, I knew that. I wouldn't make that mistake, Andrew. I'm a yam yam. Ah, right. Okay, fair enough. I, my apologies. But um, it, well, and also, um, in a short while, we we're going to have a scouter joining as well, because uh, you've had quite an amazing success with inclined bed therapy, haven't you? Yes, it's been quite. It's it's something that I've always I've always wanted to get into, you know. For twenty years, I've been helping people with illnesses, um, but a sports angle is something that I've tried to get involved in for quite a number of years. I first approached the baggies um, through the manager, and to you know to see if they would uh, have the whole team on an incline bed. Mm -hmm. um, just well, the, the object was to determine whether it would boost their performance. But that never it ne never came to fruition, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we'll be hearing from uh, champion Tony Moran shortly, um, the Scouse boxer, as as uh, Andy introduces him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's been it's been a fascinating fascinating experiment. <laughs> He's just sent me a message saying uh, it's going to be like listening to Red Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> I like Red Dwarf. <laughs> Yeah, it was one of the uh, decent programs on telly when I was still watching it there, yeah. It was, yeah. I used to enjoy <laughs> that. But, um, Jason, um, I suppose, really, you've got quite a bit to say to Andrew because it, you tried it and it's had quite an effect for you, hasn't it? Yeah, well, um, as I, we were saying just beforehand, um, my, my problem is circulation. I've got terrible circulation due to the um, antiphospholipid syndrome that, that that I've, that I've seemed to have got from somewhere. Um, so my circulation is is really really bad, and I noticed um, from time from a, straight away I actually noticed. I know you say there are a lot of people that it takes a couple of weeks for them to get used to it, and and can things can get worse, but things improved overnight for me. I, literally overnight, the first morning that I woke up, my circulation's better. My hands are, are pink. My hands are pink. They're never pink. They're always cold. And I, see, I take warfarin as well, see, as part of this condition. So uh, my hands are always cold. Uh, my blood's thin anyway. And But now my circulation is, is, is uh, apart from I've got a blood clot in my leg, which stops um, my, the lower part of my right leg from getting very much. But it, it, it is a lot improved um, on before. And, and I found that that happened straight away. That, that's interesting, especially with the... Uh... The deep, deep vein thrombosis we're talking about. Is it yes, it, acute ischemia, yeah. Okay. Well, well um, Judy's mum had uh, quite a sizable lump on her leg. Um, she's passed away a few years back now. And um, she got puzzled because it just vanished. And according, according to the medical profession, that shouldn't have happened. And they were very concerned that this blood clot had, had somehow moved around the body, and, which, is, which is a danger. But, but what I suspected happened is it, it, because of the increased circulation, it actually dissolved it away naturally. Wow. Well, um, for, for all those people who are listening to this on the YouTube replay, um, we're recording the Skype feed so that there will be video of us all talking and you'll be able to see how fit and healthy Jason looks because... Um, I mean, I remember um, <laughs> we both said we were quite concerned about Jason because he had a heart attack just before Christmas and he was looking quite grey, his skin was pale and he, these real dark circles under his eyes. 
and um, when I was talking to him about, I think it was 10 days or two weeks after he inclined his bed, um, my other half, Tina, walked in the room to bring me a cup of tea, and she stopped and did a double take. She went, oh, my God, Jason looks so well. And it, it, I can see the difference it's made on him, never mind him telling me. I, I had a problem, see, with appetite as well. I lost a lot of weight really quickly um, because I couldn't eat anything. And I thought it was due to the pills that I was taking and, and, and what was going on. Um, but since I've been doing this inclined bed therapy, I, I didn't used to eat anything. I couldn't eat anything. I used to have acid reflux, things that get stuck in my throat. Um, and I, so, so as a result of that, I, I lost loads of, lots and lots of weight. I lost about four stone. And so it, it, that's gone. I now eat normally like I used to eat when I was growing up. You know, I'm, I'm in things. I'm all. I'm. 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 I'm sat and I'm always eating and picking. I've put. I have put some weight on. I'm not too much. I hope because I don't want to um, over overstretch my heart. But uh, yeah, it's my appetite's come back. I could. I could list a, 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 so many things as long as your arm of the the improvements that it's made to me. And and one of my um, fears when I was wanting to do this was how it would affect my wife because we slept, both sleep in the same bed um, and it was actually her that came back who'd read up on it um, and she came home from work one day with some bed raisers and said we're going to give this a try and so we did that and it, it's due to her and she used to suffer from terrible migraines bad migraines she'd have migraines for three or four days on time um, and, and, and won't be able to get rid of them and she said to me she said I, I, we've been doing it for about four or five weeks and she said to me the other day she said I had a headache and it was unusual because I thought to myself, my God, I ain't had a headache in so long. She'd not had a headache in, in such a long time, yet she suffers from migraines. Uh, so it, 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 I could give, like I say, I could give a list as long as my arm as, uh, as the improvements that it's given me. And uh, has, your, has your wife had any migraines since the bed has been tilted? No, no not a single migraine. My, my last migraine, um, was in 1994 when I raised the bed. <laughs> yeah, it's, I can believe it. It that the, the inclined bed is a cure for migraine. Now, it, did we just mention the dreaded cure word? Yes, they don't want that, do they? No, no we don't want the cure. We don't want the cure a, word. A cheap and simple uh, cure like this one is. I mean, you, you, it's it don't cost you anything. You can just do do it with a couple of bricks. I I, I honestly would. Um, no matter if you're healthy or whether you're healthy or you're not, if you if you're not healthy, then then um, it's going to help you no end. And if you are healthy, you're still going to feel benefits from it. Yes, I think anyone listening to this for the first time is going to be pretty confused <laughs> because we're talking about inclining the bed, which is merely raising the head end of the bed uh, six to eight inches or fifteen centimeters and above. Uh, to cause the whole bed to slope down from head to toe. Um, we've named this inclined bed therapy. It's not really a therapy. It's how we used to sleep back in ancient Egyptian times. Because when they pulled the beds out of the tombs, every single one of them was raised exactly 15 centimetres higher at the head end. They knew a thing or two, those Egyptians. And also there's a, there's a wonderful picture of a hospital in Constantinople um, which was renowned for being more successful treating patients than anywhere else in the world. And that picture illustrates every bed in that hospital is inclined, is raised at the head end. And it, it, it goes back to the Tudor period as well. We had a condition called the sweating sickness, which killed millions of people, even the king of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was fearful of this sweating sickness. And, and if you got it and you went to bed, you didn't wake up in the morning. So what I read was that they placed two guards by the side of the bed and that effectively prevented the patient from lying down and they survived. Wow. That, I mean, this is, this is so amazing how, how effective it is. And I think one thing we're always up against, Andrew, is that Mm, an awful lot of people these days cannot see the value of anything that costs nothing. Yes. In fact, I, well, that's my favourite price. Mm. There's nothing. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a cheapskate in life. 
you know, I've, I've got my, my uh, electric bill down to £12 for the quarter, um, my gas bill down to 15 quid a quarter, and my water bill, well, that's laughable. But, you know, quite rightly so, because there's no, there's no huge amount of money to be handed over, then it can't be worth, worth doing. But that is such, such a mistake. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's possibly the, the, the most sensible thing you could do for yourselves is to simply jack up the head end of the bed. You know, I see people waking up in the mornings and they've got very big Jaffa oranges for eyes all puffed up. And, um, you know, the next morning, after sleeping on an inclined bed, all, all those baggy eyes have gone. You know, it's quite bizarre. Yeah, that's another thing I noticed as well. I think I noticed that on the first day, the first the morning after, I noticed that, um, first of all, uh, it took me a little while longer to come round from my slumber because I'd been, I think I'd been in such a deep sleep. Um, uh, it took me a little while longer to come round. But once I came round, I felt like I'd been up all day after five minutes, you know. Mm. I felt like I'd been up all day. I didn't have that morning feeling. I, I'd go downstairs and I'd cook myself some, you know, breakfast and what have you. And I'd think, you know, I just feel like I'd just been up all day. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a big again, difference. That was the thing that we noticed when we first tilted our bed. <clears throat> I took the uh, the lads down to the seafront and they got skateboards. Mm-hmm. And I got a bull terrier pulling them up and down the, the seafront. <laughs> and I was running in front of the dog encouraging them the dog was completely shattered a bull terrier is a amazing dog so they'll oh, run yeah. for miles but he couldn't run anymore and i got back to the wife and i said oh the dog's knackered she said but why aren't you and i thought wow i could have run forever yeah you know and uh, that that was to me that i mean okay th- this was back in 1994 when, when we were experimenting we didn't really expect well to see any staggering differences but but it did you know it, it's varicus veins you know my wife's varicus vein had been there for 16 years and within four weeks it had gone flat and a nurse called stephanie ness who who butted in on a conversation i was having with a, a guy down the local bookshop and um, she tilted her bed at around the same time and lo and behold her varicus vein went flat in four weeks Wow. You know, so so that told me that I've now something significant because what we've shown there is we've changed the pressure from inside the veins that was pushing the veins out, causing them to bulge. We've actually lowered that pressure and we're now drawing the veins back in. Now, this has implications for edema as well because the doctors will say, raise your legs um, to get rid of edema, but all that tends to do is to push the edema back to the upper torso um, or back to the trunk. And when you stand up again in the morning, you know, the, the fluids all move back down, back down to your legs. But what we found was that the people with edema were reporting, you know, that the, the edema had gone and, and didn't appear again. So by changing the pressure inside the veins, you reversed the problem. The initial problem was that the pressure inside the veins was greater than the pressure outside of the veins. So fluid from the veins used to migrate into the surrounding tissue. Now, what we've done is lowered the veins, which is evidenced by the varicose veins going flat, lowered the pressure in the veins. Now, the fluid migrates back into the veins, is whipped around the circulatory system and out through the bladder. Yes, people with a lot of edema will urinate a lot more initially, um, but that's a good thing because it's actually getting rid of this flu- excess fluid. And indeed, people have reported huge weight loss, uh, and this is in people that, that have a, a fluid retention problem. Right. Well, something I wanted to bring up with you, and it's been raised as a as a concern by a couple of people. Uh, firstly, a friend of mine who's a nurse, and she's saying, "Oh, you can't do that, people with low blood pressure." And also, the, there's a friend of the show, Mithrin, who's in the chat room now, and his wife has uh, very low blood pressure, and she's he says that if a doctor takes her blood pressure. They won't let her leave again until it goes into triple figures. So um, I know that Mithrin said his wife had had um, a lot of trouble with leg pain since she started in the raised bed. I think he said it's 30 days they've been trying it now. I don't know whether she's still doing it. I I think he said she was going to have to pack up. So 
can you can you advise whether there is a contraindication for someone with low blood pressure or it's perhaps something that that's a initial stages they get this aching legs and it will go away yeah um what, what's been observed over the years is the blood pressure because of inclined bed therapy has moved in both directions in some cases it remains stable mm -hmm. but but it's pushed low blood pressure up and it's lowered high blood pressure you know but i mean i i suffer with a uh, high blood pressure so it's not actually relieved relieve my problem and my problem i believe is caused by um um polycystic kidneys yeah um which is a uh, you know it's, it's just unfortunate i've got that but there you go mm -hmm. um but blood pressure can move in both directions and i suspect that that um a person with low blood pressure might find that their blood pressure would improve mm. and maybe that's causing the extra pain you know if you're having a bit of extra pressure going through the veins and through the arteries then that, that could actually register back as a as, a, as an ache or pain mm. i believe you said you you had a, um, a bit of an ache in your lower legs when you first started jason yeah yeah that, that was really odd a uh, stiff neck as well you know, terrible creaking cracking stiff neck um and uh, quite a few of us by now were, were, were sleeping inclined and they're all reporting well not all but the majority were reporting uh, sim similar aches and pains initially within the first two to three weeks but after that the pains just melted away as quick as they come mm. well i had i had some pain but i don't know whether because when i first started i just i was just at the end of a, about a gout so i'd got um bad pain in my yeah. ankles anyway yeah for but, sure but, I, or, but because i've got um acute ischemia i've got um one of the main arteries into my leg is is blocked with a it's it's actually in a stent that was put in there from a previous uh, blockage right so it can't it, it can't be moved it's um it's, it's say because it's stable they're going to leave it where it is um but as a result my lower leg is cold constantly it's like a, it's like a dead leg now that's improved as well no end i used to have to go to bed with a hot water bottle i've been going to bed with a hot water bottle every day no matter whether winter summer any every single night i had to have a hot water bottle. i had to take it away with me on holiday i had to have a hot water bottle for me for right foot i don't even wear a sock on my foot now no. it, it's and i don't yeah. wear a hot water i don't need a hot water bottle i don't i don't have a, a sock on my foot there's nothing on there i've just been in bed like i normally like i used to be yes before, before this all happened that, that's that's interesting as well um again lots and lots of reports in the early days and indeed all the time is is that people would suffer with cold hands and cold feet in bed i mean my wife was a classic example she'd put her feet on me and they'd be like blocks of ice and you know it would take two hours for the feet to become normal temperature if if indeed they did and uh, now she sleeps with her feet out the bed because they get a little bit too warm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's and again, and again, I suspect what's happening is if you if you ever put your thumb on a bicycle pump and and, and forced air through a small gap with your finger, it gets hot. Yeah. So the, you know that because it's under more pressure, right? And because it's flowing at a greater velocity, yeah, or we've increased the circulation uh, marginally. Then, then that would actually generate a bit more friction. Mm -hmm. So, and it would also distribute the heat better. You know, if you've got a blocked radiator on a truck, it'll overheat. Yeah. Mm. But if you've got the right size radiator for the truck, and if everything's open and moving freely, it takes the heat from the engine and distributes it to the radiator. So the same with the body. You know, if, if we can improve the circulation, we can shift the heat, heat more evenly around the body. Mm. Yeah, I suspect the, there's a guy called the Ice Man, and I, I, yeah, I've been watching what he's doing as well with his posture. Oh, yeah, and uh, I'm, he's using posture. Really? Yeah. I, I've seen. He, he's the guy who can submerge himself in ice and not have any ill effects, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's pretty amazing that guy. And if anyone hasn't seen it, I urge you to just go to YouTube and just put the ice man in there and uh, you'll find him yeah so he's he's obviously worked out how he can control his body temperature as well mm -hmm. i su suspect he might have thicker blood than most people as well 
um, because again if you if you've increased the thickness of the blood then back to the old bicycle pump analogy you know to move thicker blood through the vessels um, would, would generate more heat and indeed the opposite occurs when you're on warfarin as jason said is because you thin the blood so therefore there's less friction and 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 therefore the body temperature cools down below comfortable levels mm -hmm. uh, 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 that reminds me of something you you mentioned uh, a few weeks ago in a message um when you were talking about getting the word out and and hopefully having tony on with us later in the show is is going to uh, really do wonders for that because it, it hopefully it'll draw in one or two well more than one or two a lot of people that don't normally listen to us and it, was it you said if this came from um religion or the medical authorities this would be absolutely amazing but because we're just mechanics it can't possibly be true that's that's right well they don't want it to be true yeah. no absolutely well it's going to cost them a fortune isn't it yes it, yeah. instead of spending these thousands of pounds on pharmaceutical medications or pharmaceutical as we prefer to call them you just raise your bed and suddenly all kinds of things that you thought were lifelong problems as in jason's case suddenly they're gone yeah your, your sound's a little bit um breaking up your your sound oh that's must be a skype issue sorry about oh, okay. that it's okay here it's okay here andy okay okay yeah um it's <laughs> if we can move this into the into the sports arena as we'll hear later from tony mm -hmm. then you know the sky's the limit this could this could really fly especially with the clamping down on the uh, on the drugs and you know and, and what they need is an edge and i believe we've got something here that gives sports people an edge mm -hmm. do you think that's probably why we, we as a country as a nation we never win anything because we lay flat and everybody else already knows <laughs> <laughs> I, i've had a lot of feedback from people weightlifters as well i've got a weightlifter who's doing incredibly well um um but but yes um I, I suspect that quite a few people have cottoned on and, and are using it but unlike tony not prepared to broadcast what's been happening to them mm. and we've got another boxer uh, billy carito and um he's been using an inclined bed and he's it's improved his his performance his staying power his punching power you know i'm getting this feedback from the guy and all he's done is tilted his bed so how did you meet um, Tony? Um, how did you get through, through, how did you get together? How did he get his bed inclined? He, he, Tony contacted me after he watched a video with um, Ch Charles Clive de Carl with Clive de Carl, yeah. And yep. uh, Cl Clive de Carl is a uh, is well, he's a good man. He's he's a, he's a good man. He helps a lot of people out. Um, different line to what I'm I'm doing, but uh, he helps people with nutrients and and. Um, and supplements and, and you know and, and got health guidance so uh, Tony uh, was advised to contact me by, by um, uh, Clive and um, he, he decided to go for it straight away and put his bed on an incline um, Tony had been through a very rough patch he'll tell us more about that in, in the uh, when, when he comes on I mean at the time at the time he he fought his bout and won his, cha his world championship he was actually homeless, you know, which is which is like a double whammy, you know. He's, we're talking about things that cost, cost nothing that have great effect. And he's a guy that hasn't even got a home, yeah. He's put a couple of bricks under his bed and goes on to win the world championship <laughs> title fight, which is incredible. Wow. I, I, I never tire of telling people about this inclined bed therapy. I mean... It, some people must think it, it's almost a cult we're trying to start because um, the, the thing that excites me so much, Andrew, is, is we do get some, some incredible feedback uh, after some of the guests we get on, but we've never had as much feedback as from when we've had you on from that first initial show and uh, get messages from people all over the world now on a regular basis telling me that they've done it and it's wow. And I've just got one here, just arrived on Skype, and it's from a good friend of the show, Rick Dwyer, who made the film Run From The Cure with Rick Simpson. 
And he says, Rick Dwyer from Canada says, since my wife and I started Andrew Fletcher's incline bed therapy in February 2016, our sleeping patterns have improved dramatically as well as other health issues. I would like to congratulate Tony on his championship win and thank RN Tony and Andrew Fletcher for bringing this wonderful therapy to the world. So there thank you go, you. Andrew. Brilliant. Brilliant. And I'm just trying to spread the word a bit wider and uh, get more well, people. Well, I tell to... everybody. Mm -hmm. My mum's got her bed inclined. My wife's sister's got her bed inclined. Uh, my my mate, my friend, he's got his bed inclined. It took him some right messing about as well because he's, he's got a divan. But he did it. He's got it. He's got it right. He's got the, the all on a, um, a six inch inclined at the at the head. So I tell everybody, and then no, this is beginning to sound a little bit like an infomercial. <laughs> 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 you get off when, when you yeah, but we're not selling anything, not. are we? We're not. That's the problem. Is we're not selling anything. Maybe if we charge people a thousand pounds, you know, and say, look, here's your couple of blocks of wood. The way you go. Yeah. It could spread like wildfire. First of all, you'd be accused of corruption and trying to rip people off. And, of course, all news is good news. So maybe, you know, being honest and, and, and telling people how it is is probably not the way to go if you want to spread it like like wildfire. Well, I, I'm, th I'm thinking of looking online, see if I can find a job lot of old medical books. Because, um, like you said, people say, well, what can I prop my bed up on? I said, well, do it, bricks, blocks of wood if you like. But I like your idea, prop them up on old medical books, because yeah. from now on they're pretty useless. Yeah, they're going to have to be rewritten, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, uh... But, I mean, if we study animals in the wild, that's, that's you know, everything starts to make sense. You, you watch a lizard in, a, in an aquarium, and it, if it's too hot, it'll lower itself. And if it wants to warm itself up, it raises its head up, you know, and alligators and crocodiles on the side of a river bank, they'll choose a bank with an incline, yeah, so they can face down or face up. Again, reptiles regulating the body temperature, you know. The, when we stood up, we actually changed the way our circulation worked. Oh. When, we, when we, you know, we, we were hunched over, um, the holes in the back of the head, which carried the vessels, um, which carried the blood to and from the brain to the skin, um, actually migrated to the top of the head, according to Dean Falk. And she comes up with a, a theory called the radiator theory, um, which when we stood up, our brain decided to, to reroute the circulation to add uh, more cooling to the brain. But there are no vessels. There are no va there are, sorry. There are no valves in those vessels. And um, a, a brilliant scientist, um, Michel Cabernac, uh, Professor Cabernac from uh, University of Laval, Quebec, Canada, um, he placed a Doppler probe where the where the nose meets the eye, and shows normal blood flow from the brain out to the skin. Everybody's got the same. Mm -hmm. You would think. He then puts a guy on a cycle exercise cycle and gets him overheated and then he puts a Doppler probe back and now the blood is flowing in the opposite direction it's actually flowing from the skin down to the brain so a complete reversal against the pressure of the heart yeah. now Cabernac um, approached Falk and Falk's, uh, Falk's theory says that the, the brain somehow diverts the flow but like I said there are no vessels, uh, no veins in those vessels, uh, so no valves in those vessels that the brain can use to control the flow of blood. So what I put to Cabernet was that the extra heat generated uh, by the exercise cycle uh, caused extra evaporation from the hot scalp, which in turn changed the density of the blood. So instead of the blood flowing, flowing over uh, T-junctions, it actually went down and, and, and actually took the shortest route down through the brain because it was denser as a result of the evaporative heat loss. Cabernet liked that theory. Uh, whether he's published anything uh, to go along with it, I don't know. Um, he said he would, but um, you know we'll have to wait and see, I suppose, whether that, uh, that comes to fruition. But it's fascinating 
that, that we can see experimentally that simply overheating the blood and causing more evaporation can change the direction of blood flow against the pressure of the heart. Mm. That, I mean, you mentioned Tony there, and you mentioned that you were trying to get um, the, the baggies. Is that Birmingham Football Club? Uh, West Bromwich Albion. Oh, West Brom, sorry. Uh, yeah. You were trying to get them to try it. Um, have you had any success in getting any football clubs to try it? No. 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 I, I, I did think you mentioned that there was one club that talks about they might be trying it. Did I? I'm sure. sure. I'm sure you mentioned a quite a famous club that plays all in red. Oh yes, yes, but that that's not happened yet. That's in the pipeline. Ah right. Okay. And again, that's through town. That's through Tony Moran and um, his friend Mark. Yeah. Uh, I think we can guess then which team that plays in red. Yes, it yes, yes, <laughs> yes, you, yes, you can. Yes. I, I'm a I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan, and I'm going to be writing to writing to him and uh, and and trying to get in touch and just see if I can. Get, I, I know a few players on Twitter and things like that, so I'm going to try and point them in, in that direction, in your direction. Because yes. I think that'll give us an edge as well. I'm not sure I'll do that, you know, with potential for, for improving your team against the baggies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't think we'll be playing each other for a while. No, 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 no. Well, I, I was saying to my other half um, this afternoon, we, we were both, like kids waiting for Christmas, waiting for this show. And um, I said to her, I said, we've been, I mean, our, our sport, the only sport we follow nowadays is uh, motorcycle racing. And we've been marvelling for the last few years at um, the, the feats achieved by Valentino Rossi. Valentino is 37 years old. And he's basically kicking the arse of a load of youngsters who are 20, 21, 22. And uh, he, he finishes the race as fresh as when he starts. I wonder if he's perhaps hit on it, or uh, if not, if we were to try and get in touch and get him on it, he'd probably still be doing it at 100. Yeah, I, but, I, I mean, I can't, well, I, I must have approached oh, tens of thousands of people over the 20 years that I've got. But, but the initial reaction is, is, is they nod their head and say, oh, yeah, 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 thank you very much, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and walk away thinking they've got one up on you and thinking you're one brick short of a full load. Yeah. That you were going to try and sell them something at some point. That's yes. what you're thinking. Of course, yes. We've been conditioned to, you know, to wait for the hit. But, uh, yeah, uh, but, you know, it's, you know, unfortunately, it's just human nature, I suppose, that, you know, we'll, we'll cast doubt rather than, you know, entertain new ideas. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got a question in the chat room, uh, haven't we, uh, Andy? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. It's, yeah, it's uh, Kevin Mark. Um, good friend of the show again. Kevin's been doing some great work booking us uh, guests on. And Kevin's asking, are there any contraindications where inclined bed therapy would not be possible, i.e. elderly or any particular medical condition? Well what we've discovered over the years uh, and the huge amount of medical literature backs it up is that flat bed rest is perhaps the last thing you want to be doing if you're elderly and firm. You know, this this lady called Stephanie Ness, the nurse that uh, first tilted the bed for varicose veins, mm -hmm. was uh, helping a lot of the aged people and she noticed that all of the people that lived to be close on 100 or more didn't lie down for long in beds. And all those that passed quickly spent a long time lying on a bed. And in, in fact, NASA has been paying people um, $17,000 uh, just to lie on a flat bed or lie on a bed that's uh, head down and feet up um, because they want to cause the, the, uh, the body to age 10 times faster, um, which reflects what happens to astronauts in space. So they found a cheap method of studying the harmful effects of being in microgravity simply by confining healthy people to either a flat bed or a head down bed. Right. And yeah. that, that $17,000, I think I yeah. found the experiment online and it's only for about three months they're getting paid that, isn't it? That's right, yes. 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 Laid out for three months for $17,000. Yes. 
I, I, I did notice one the other day that was online that was, I think it was a similar amount of money, but you were to lay down in bed and smoke weed for a month. Oh, that sounds <laughs> all right. <laughs> I wouldn't mind doing that one, yeah. Yeah, well, the smoking weed might outweigh the damage for laying in the flat bed, might not it? I mean, yeah, it might. Yeah. One thing that does surprise me as well, Andrew, is that, that people try this for, I don't know, a month or two, and they find all these marvellous benefits for their health. And then after a month or two, they think, right, I'm fixed now, and put their bed flat, and then wonder why they get ill again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no no logic in that, is there really? No, um, I mean, for me, the, the biggest benefit is is one thing that Jason mentioned there. Um, yeah, yes, it, it did wonders for my sciatica, but the biggest benefit for me was the fact that I'd always, uh, didn't matter if I sleep two hours or 12, always used to wake up tired. Never, ever woke up feeling refreshed, and I was quite envious of people that did. And I can't remember whether it was the first night or second night, I woke up in the morning and I just felt really strange. And I thought, what's this? I feel strange. I can't work out what it And, and what it was, I wasn't half asleep and bleary eyed. I, I just felt great as soon as I got out of bed. I thought, wow. When I realised what had happened, it's like a miracle. Yeah. I know you said don't mention it, but we're talking about legal highs, yeah? Mm -hmm. and they're banning legal highs yeah? yeah but you know if you raise your bed up you've got nature's own legal high there you know because your bed's higher <laughs> yeah that's yes so nature's give yourself a, give yourself a good boost yeah mm. perhaps a you should call it a, a natural high rather than a legal high oh na yeah i like the sound of that that sounds even better yeah, yeah but yeah. perfectly legal of course <laughs> <laughs> unless the uh they start taxing us on how our, our bed is. Yes. You never know, yes. do you? you? You never know. I, I, another thing I noticed, I just want to mention, uh, just briefly, I know that we're, we're sort of like 20 to 9 and we're a little bit before watershed, but I, I tell you what else is, the other effect that I've had is that is, is my old fella woke up. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh. Nice one. Yes. I mean, you're, I've been not, you're, for... not, you're not by any means the first to have reported that. <laughs> yeah, the early morning wood. Oh, go oh, blimey. Did Honestly, it didn't nearly have my eye out a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I've been ill and I've been on all these tablets all these months and, like, you know, it's, it, it, I think it disappeared at one time. It just went on holiday. Yeah. So, uh, but, oh, God, it's back anyway. That's, so that's, that's another one. I, actually, I, what we've found as well, is that the incline bed has stopped many old people, blokes, particularly blokes, from rolling and falling out of bed. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> oh, well, I fell for that one, didn't I? <laughs> you did, didn't you? The old kickstand joke. <laughs> and you're a motorbike man as well, Andy. You should have got that one straight away. Yeah, I should. Oh, I'm a bit slow. It's me old age. That's what I blame anyway. <laughs> but we've, we've had, you know... We've talked about um, just improvements in, in our health, but if you study most illnesses like Parkinson's disease, for example, the patient with Parkinson's disease um, in the early stages will wake up completely paralysed. So the partner will then raise them up to bed and sit and get them up, propped up on the pillow and they come round a little bit. And then they raise them up a little bit more and they come round a little bit more swing the legs over the side of the bed and get them to, to sit on the side of the bed and they come round a little bit more, more compass mentors, get them to stand up, get them to move around. By the end of the day, they're walking around like you and I mm. and then they go back to bed again and start it all over again. It's like, hello, you know, have you considered that it might be at the bed? Yeah, absolutely. We've actually got another question for you, Andrew, and it's from Red Robin, who's a newcomer in uh, Raconteur's News chat tonight. So welcome, Red Robin. And uh, he's uh, he or she is asking, does inclined bed therapy help individuals with type 1 or type 2 diabetes? Yes. Um, we've just, well, uh, uh, um, a study has been conducted. It's on my website, which is inclinedbedtherapy.com. Mm -hmm. And... Um, there's research on there from a, a tiny island called Pompeii, um, which 
um, has a huge problem with um, type 2 and type 1 diabetes thanks to the introduction of the American diet. Before the American diet arrived, these people were all super fit, living on fruits and fish. Um, but they've got a massive problem with uh, morbid obesity and also a huge problem with, with diabetes. So a, a guy called Tataki uh, Yi Ting, who's a doctor, um, approached me and said, would, would we be able to test this on a group of patients with type 2 diabetes? And um, the beds were all tilted, and the photographs are there of the, the actual beds that were tilted. And what we found was that um, right across the board, it lowered their blood sugar levels quite considerably, simply by tilting the bed. Mm -hmm. But uh, also, I have a, an 82 years young friend who's, who's on um, insulin, but he's type 2 diabetes on, on insulin. And um, his uh, insulin um, requirements have dropped absolutely phenomenally. And, um, you know, and another lady, which, which happens to be his wife, has noticed that she, she's um, uh, had a damaged pancreas caused through um, administration of prednisolone, uh, which is um, a steroid. Right. And uh, she wasn't told what, what, what they were giving her, and she was just said, here, drink this. And then they told her she'd be type 1 diabetic for the rest of her life and that her pancreas would never never function again. Well, the fact the pancreas has started to function again because she's also finding that, that you know, she's not, not needing anywhere near as much insulin, which, ah. which, is, in, which is incredible. You see, I've got a, a bit of a interest in that as well because my stepson is type 1 diabetic. Uh, and he's already expressed an interest. He's only 15, but he's already expressed an interest in uh, in climbing his bed because he he had heard me and his mum talking about things. Um, and he, uh, uh, to me, it's just him trying to get out and having to do his blood sugar and all that sort of thing and uh, take the injections. But yeah, it, that's it's all good. I'm gonna have to try that on. Try and put his bed up. That's great news and. Great news is we've got uh, Tony Moran has joined us. Good evening, Tony. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you fine, mate. We haven't got your camera on at the minute. Is there any chance you can put your camera on? Right, okay, let me see. It's just that we're recording that's, that's, it for, um, there for the YouTube version. There you go, Tony. That's brilliant. Let me just fix me top of my hair. I'm going. No worries, mate. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for joining us, Tony, and uh, congratulations on your World Championship victory. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, was, so I was just good. saying to Andrew, uh, before you arrived, um, my partner and I, we follow motorbike racing, and we were, we were raving about how Valentino Rossi has been kicking the young kids' asses at the age of 37. Now, um, you can go one better than that, can't you? With my age, you mean? Yeah. I'm a ripe young 42. 42. Look at the I... skin, though. Can't tell, can you? No. <laughs> well, absolutely. You're looking well there, mate. And, I bet um... he uses Grecian 2000. Hi, hey, Anthony. Uh, tell it's us about your your uh, your victory, your win, um, and how you won the title. Tell us, who, who were you up against? What sort of age were they? And, uh, and, and how did it go? The guy I fought for the world title, his name was Sandy Rob. He's uh, he was a three times ABA Scottish champion. He's a he's a solid pro. He is in, to me my remembrance he's a thirty five, I think. Thirty four. Mm -hmm. Rated in the top ten in Canada. Yeah, I'm not sure why he's a Scotsman, maybe he lived there for some time. So it was a WBF world title, which is not one of the the main three. The three that we all that we're all well aware of the IBF, WBA, WBC. This is what's known as a fringe world title, but nonetheless, he was where the opponent to beat. He was a solid uh, individual. It was a, a fight over twelve rounds. So if you bear this in mind, at the time I was living homeless. I was training for a fight without a base. I had a lot of pressures outside of the the fight game to deal with and contend with. Mm -hmm. But at the age of 42, I got in the ring for 12 hard rounds. The, the fight's going to be up to the, um, for people to watch soon, quite quite soon as well. The footage to give evidence 
It's always evidence based, in my opinion. Though. Mm -hmm. So the evidence will show that for twelve rounds, the fight was from beginning to end was was at a relentless pace. So if you bear that in mind, forty two years of age, living homeless, dealing with a lot of pressure outside the ring, was able to get in the ring on fight night and and perform like an athlete of twenty years of age. Now, besides my intensive training program, my coach, my friend Harden, who's a fantastic coach. Who guided me towards that world title. I also had the benefits of health and the benefits of inclined bed therapy. Therapy, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> inclined bed therapy. And and what will also be noticed by people if you do want to watch the fight is that for twelve rounds I didn't sit down once. Do you understand what I mean by that, Jason? Yeah, yeah, when you're in the corner. Yeah, no 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 forty two year old fighters in a world title fight stand for twelve rounds like I did. I did. You know why I did? Because Andrew told me to. And I trust Andrew. So what Andrew explained to me was was gravity's at play when I'm standing up. When I'm sitting down, it's only half at play. Mm -hmm. So my recovery is cut in half. If I lie down, as I don't be worried, <laughs> hopefully you'll be lying down in the ring, but you know what I mean. If you're lying down yeah. And gravity is not at play, so it's quite logical, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, it, it? It is an incredible story. Um, can you give some idea of um, your, your previous, what, what, you know, how you were previously, your career, your boxing career? Uh, I think I, I had a quick look at your record. I think you were sort of, I think 26 wins and 60 feet out. What was it like before, and uh, and what what was the major difference before, perhaps when you weren't as successful? Uh, to now that, that, that you know you, you've won a world title well just let me add this though just what i was speaking uh, prior about mm -hmm. if you're also again evidence-based what's the video from the first round to the last round my body and my muscular um my my muscular sort of stamina and endurance didn't fatigue once and that's that's trust me when I say that's that's some going. If you watch the fight, watch how relentless it was, and then bear in mind of forty two and from the first round to the last, I was as muscularly fresh throughout. That makes sense as well. Yes, it does. Just turn my phone off, sorry. Okay. So I didn't fatigue muscularly once throughout the fight. That's something I've never experienced before. Uh I've I, my boxing career and um, all my fight career has been an uphill struggle for many different reasons. I'm not going to go into it because it's, it's too long-winded. But the point is, is that with age and maturity, but then finding Clive the car who put me onto Andrew. Oh my God, <laughs> like it's just become amazing. I've won a world title of 42, not to prove, uh, not to prove, well, not to prove anything to myself because I, I know what I am. But I wanted to prove something about health. And wellness and inclined yes. bed therapy. That's what I wanted to prove to people. And I, I wish it was on a bigger stage. I really do. So I so wish that. But the story's not over yet. Mm. No. Well, absolutely. I, I was, um, made contact with a friend today who I used to co-host his radio show with him. A guy called Tom Barnes. He does a radio show to uh, it's mainly American listeners. Uh, it goes out on a Saturday afternoon, and I know Tom said he'd love to speak to you if you get a chance. Brilliant. So uh, that's True Frequency Radio over in the States, and uh, Tom would be glad to speak to you. So, uh, you know, the, the, there's some alternative radio hosts, they yeah. have this big thing about, oh, so and so stole my guests, and, and really. We don't give a damn who interviews anybody so long as we get the word out, and particularly something as important as what yourself and Andrew are, are talking about here. Sharing and caring, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. There, there was one thing one thing that, that, that Tony did that he hasn't mentioned, and that is to drop his hands down. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a massively important. So and and when, you, when you're back in the corner, it's to have your hands down by your side and shake them as if you're washing your hands and shaking off the excess water. Again, that. that's to put the power back into the, back into the hands. I did listen, Andrew, because I did it. Have you watched the footage? Did I, it I know you did it. Have you watched it, have you? I have indeed. You sneaky devil. I also watched your original fights where you was orthodox boxing yeah, yeah. and how quickly you fatigued, age 37. 
oh listen listen i've been fighting since the age of 13 so i understand how different it is now yeah uh-huh. um, I, I did um share the link in the chat room there about um from andrew's website where you gave the testimony of, of your you gave a picture of your hands the night after the fight and how quickly they recovered um red robin has just said i wish tony had before and after pictures of his hands on there it looks like he only has pictures of what his hands look like after the fight he doesn't have pictures of how fast the swelling decreased because of the inclined bed therapy so maybe that's something you can do next time Tony. actually actually you did it i'm looking on my phone i'm pretty sure i took photos of both yes you did I did, didn't I, Andrew? Yes, he's got a picture of himself and his kids in the hotel room. Yeah. No, at home. At home, sorry. After the hotel room. Right. Sh- and, my his ha- and his hands are normal. Yeah, I'm going to show it. Um, that, that's something you could perhaps show on Andrew's website. I mean, we'll, we'll put all the links up um, when we post the podcast on our website so people will be able to go and look at the, um, the links. There's the... Uh, the testimony on Andrew's website. Also, there's the it's quite a good article about um, your achievement in the Guardian as well. I've been sharing that with quite a few people. Yeah, that went, that went, that went, that was widely that was widely read. That. Yeah. But you know what, Andrew? I did try. I I, I always try. You know what? You know what? I do. I put, I try to get inclined bed therapy mentioned, but yeah. I know the, how the reporters work, Tony. The editors and down for me. You understand? I mentioned it at every opportunity. Yes. Yeah, I know. I read that article today as well, and uh, I noticed that y- your name was there, Andrew. It was. Yeah, yeah. And what I think article? so. I'm sure you said uh, that, you, that you thanked Andrew K. Fletcher. In the Guardian article. Well, maybe I'm. Uh, it might be a different one, but uh, yeah. I'm getting uh, cross purposes. But uh, it wasn't in the Guardian. I, I no, I didn't. You didn't go right. in the Guardian. Well, you're on Raconteurs News. That's even better. <laughs> it, it is. But what we need to what we need to do now is to get more boxers and and get more sports people mm-hmm. involved in this. You know, to give our to give our Olympics team an edge over the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, exactly. what are they waiting for? Do you know recovery recovery is just I don't I don't get lactic acid to build up anymore. Yeah, yeah, just as I predicted. Your fitness is better. Fantastic. Everything's better. So the, the the lactic acid is that burning feeling in your muscles, isn't it? When you yeah. fatigue, yeah. But the point I'm making is, Andy, is that I, when I when I train hard, I've trained immensely hard today. Mm-hmm. Now, sadly, I'll be sleeping in a flat bed tonight because I'm staying in my ladies. But when I'm in the incline bed, I won't notice any. I won't notice any soreness tomorrow. I might tomorrow because I'm sleeping in a flat bed. Mm-hmm. But tomorrow, you know. When I get back in the incline bed, no soreness. What I recover, recover overnight immediately. Yeah. Well, one thing we've noticed from our experience is we we raised our bed. It must be getting on for probably even more than a year ago now, and there were some things that we didn't actually notice changing until we go away and forget to take the bed raises, which we did a few weeks back. And you sleep in a flat bed for a night or a couple of nights. And we stayed in a hotel, uh, lovely memory foam mattress and all that. But when we got up in the morning, we went to the bathroom. As you walk past the mirror, you, you glance in the mirror and think, who the hell is that in the mirror with the big swollen eyes and the puffy oh. face? <laughs> why why, why something so logical that people just dismiss? It drives me insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were discussing this earlier on where it, that people don't value things that are just they, they don't have any monetary value attached yeah, to it. I'm selling, yeah, that's the way of the world. It's sick, isn't it? Horrible. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's something like this. Um, I'm so pleased that Andrew's uh, managed to get you on to come and talk to us because I, I've been expanding, expanding this theory for what, 18 months or whatever it is since first spoke with Andrew and tried it myself, but I've only actually been telling sick people about it. Mm. But now, with your experiences, Tony, and your testimony, we can now say it's not just good for sick people, 
it, it's good for people who are well as well and, and they can find benefits yeah, that's from that's it. That's true. Well, I, I reckon, I reckon because we, we've seen these inclined beds come out of the Egyptian tombs. Now, they must have worked bloody hard building those pyramids, you know, dragging those pieces of stone up yeah. those up those ramps. Yeah, quite an amazing feat, really. And uh, even the workforce had mud mud beds, and those mud beds are still preserved, and every single one of them is inclined. You know, how did we miss something so logical? Do you know what, Andrew? Do you know, do you know, do you know if you sold... The, the, the concept of like sleep like an Egyptian to women and the Kardashians slept in these inclined beds that would be it it would be, be done job would be done what you were so, saying about about legal eyes you know, there sleep. Andrew uh, I think yeah. sleep sleep like an Egyptian could be a good little catchphrase there because yeah. sadly it has got, it's got the sales have got to be involved if, if you don't if you don't if there isn't a sales pitch involved in this day and age, people are just, until people are, this is what I'm finding, when people are desperate, that's when they'll do it. That's when they'll try something because you've got nothing else to try. Yeah. Mm. So I, I've had people in my life, in my circle, who, who through desperation of not sleeping, of being kept awake by the baby's coughing, um, and so many, so many illustrations I can offer. But the point I'm making is, I'll then say to them, Please just try this. I'll be going on at them, but I've just stopped going on at people now. I say, just let me do this for you. Just I see snoring, can't sleep with my husband, he snores too much. Guaranteed overnight, it's changed, solved. That's it yeah. then. Yeah, you got the evidence then, but you still look at you like you're nuts, but you just can't work out why it was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're banging your head up against the wall all the time, but you know, that, that wall will come down sooner or later. Well, because the people like you're the town in Tony. Yeah, but you, you care about these people, so you can't stop trying. That's the problem. That's yes. That's, That's not a absolutely it's just yeah. something that I won't get. I, I just don't see a person no more. I just, obviously, you've learned, Andrew. You've been doing a lot longer than me, but I'm just an advocate for you now. That's what I'm doing. Cheers, mate. Well, I, I, it's been it's been pretty easy for me to uh, to convince people to do it, and and uh, I think everybody that I've met that's that I've told about it is doing it. Um, and it, but it's been pretty easy for me because the just the difference in me, our skeleton with skin hanging off it, you know, just really? four months ago. Really? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What's your medical condition, Jason? Uh, I've got um, a con I had a heart attack uh, early December last year. Uh, that was my second one. I've got a condition called antiphospholipid syndrome, which uh, it's really thick blood. But I, so I, I'm on blood thinners, and uh, so, but I, I'd really been, uh, I'd really been ill, and I really looked like a skeleton with just some grey skin all, all, all over it. That, and yeah. people, I, well, uh, I worked my mother-in-law's uh, over the weekend, and I was trying to explain it to my mother-in-law and her husband, who's uh, obviously my father-in-law. He's, he's just all he just kept saying was. Just look at him. Just look at him. Just yeah. look at him. That, that's all you need to see. Just look at him. You are that's the evidence. That's all we could say. You're the evidence, aren't you? Well, we, we, we were so concerned about um, Jason's health because, I mean, you, you did look really ill and, and like grey and the dark circles under your eyes, that, particularly after the heart attack. It was more noticeable. But... Um, um, I mentioned at the start of the show and uh, my Tina came in through to bring me a, a cup of tea when I was talking to Jason on Skype after one of the shows. After only two weeks of inclining his bed, she went, oh my God, did a double take. Jason looks so well, he looks like he's been to Spain for a couple of weeks. Who convinced you to do it, Jason? How did you become involved? And how did you get uh, convinced? Well, obviously, um, I... I... Sorry, I'm saying obviously when it's clearly in obvious because you don't know. But I, I hooked up with uh, Andy, and Andy asked me to be co-presenter on here. And he uh, previously had Andrew on, on uh, when he was uh, on what with enemy enemy within, weren't it? Yeah. And I'd I'd heard and I'd listened to uh, I'd listened to Andrew's uh, presentations and things like that. And I'd always thought to myself, it was always sort of like in the back of my mind, oh, I, you know, I'll I'll do it. <laughs> um, and then it was my wife uh, came home with some bed incliners from she was working as a warden uh, at a, 
a, a local old people's place and they've got these bed incliners in the wardrobe. She says, can I have them? And they said, yeah, no problem. So she's brought them and said, we need to try this because she'd, she'd read about it. She'd heard me talking about it and uh, posting things on Facebook about it. And so she uh, said, well, we're going to try this. And we tried it. And, and for me, it was instant. The, the very next day, I felt, I felt, I felt uh, like I were human again. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. And uh, Tony, we've got a question for you from the chat room. And this is from Red Robin. And Red Robin is asking, what exactly are the benefits that athletes like Tony receive from inclined bed therapy? Can I'll you answer that? Me answer it. Oh, do you want me to answer it? If you could, please, Tony. I'm oh, yeah. sorry, yeah. Okay, so before inclined bed therapy, I'd be training intensely. I'd be waking up the next day. Uh, riddled with pain and soreness, muscular soreness. I don't mean uh, joint soreness, muscular soreness. Mm -hmm. Injuries would last so much long as you're getting older. The circulation, the blood flow, is is less as pole. So lying flat doesn't allow for the, the blood to get to the area of damage, so it doesn't recover as quick. I'm in I'm in combat sports. Get a lot of damage, mm -hmm. so that's a massively important part for me. It allows me to train more efficiently the next day. Allows me to put uh, more more intensity and effort in on a consistent basis, as I wouldn't be able to because I'd be so sore. Uh, in terms of my respiratory system, the lung capacity uh, of, of 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 my inhalations of oxygen are better. Everything's better. I feel stronger. My uh, physicalities look look even better than than they did before it. In terms of like muscular density, and I take my top off if you want. I'm ripped. <laughs> I'm <impressive. laughs> uh, but you know, I'm being serious. There's there's so many benefits, like um, aesthetic benefits to it too. If you you know if you're that way inclined, if you wanna you do wanna look physically well, it, it impacts on that. So so many benefits. I just, I just feel great, happy. And my sport, my sport and life has just improved dramatically. And it is the hardest game, boxing. Proven, well, fight sports, MMA, Thai boxing, uh, boxing, all very, uh, um, very demanding sport. It's the only yeah. sports in the world where you'd have to train as hard as any other athlete, but then you'd have to endure the, the physical punishment that other athletes don't endure. Mm -hmm. So it is proven that the, the fight sports are the toughest proven sports in the world for that reason. Other sports are very hard, very demanding. Uh, Tour de France, row and all that. But trust me, when you're in there for 12 rounds, going so, so, there ain't nothing that can beat that in terms of intensity and toughness and state of mind and mental pressure and all them things. So, there you go. Thank does, you. Does for it that help timing. with, uh, you know, any facial injuries you might get during a fight? You know, you might get, does it help with that? Everything, Jason. Any, any swelling or any damage, even. Even damage to the bone. I got a crack rib. Would you believe I got a crack rib before that world title fight? That's why I went into that. I meant to say that before, by the way. I had a crack rib going into a world title fight. Now, it happened 10 days pre prior to the fight. I was in a lot of pain. Honestly, a lot of pain. Wow. I, did, I couldn't spar again after that. that it, was, it happened in the sparring session. I couldn't spar after that. I just had to do... Uh, intensive training, but I couldn't even do the intensive training for like five days after the, the, the injury. It was too painful. So, but I do firmly believe that the incline bed therapy, I'm not saying it was all that, I've got a very strong mental strength to, to take forward into, into what I do. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sculpted to adversity, I'd say, in terms of the things I've done. So I'm a tough, tough, tough competitor, tough minded individual, but I, I definitely will say that. The, the, the incline bed therapy assisted the, the site of the injury to, to get us to a point where I could accept the pain mm -hmm. before I went into the fight. So yeah, that, one thing that, that has been reported, and indeed I've noticed myself, is old scar tissue. And we're talking about scars that have been there for most of your life. Yeah. Suddenly becomes smoother and less visible. And it, it takes a while for you to realize. You look, I mean, I've got um, quite a sizable, well, did have quite a sizable scar on my leg. Where well, I had a running with some barbed wire, and uh, it left a deep groove. That deep groove's all filled in, 
you know, it's, it's just barely visible. Look at the four of us, look at our skin, not even joking. Yeah, well, I, 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 I just know, looked. I old you guys are, but, I'm, you know, I think our skin is, is showing. This I'm, is what, I'm, 60, I'm 60 this year. Yeah. Listen, there's, there's aesthetic qualities, there's, there's vanity benefits to this as well. Your mm. skin, your hair, your eyes, everything. Yeah, and your sex life, according to Jason as well. <laughs> absolutely. Um, listen, guys, it, this first hour is absolutely flown by. What we normally do at this time, we put on a quick tune to so we can uh, grab a drink or yeah, a quick comfort visit if we need it and allow oh, the listeners to do the same. And uh, managed to find a song for the break, which I thought was quite apt. It's called Positively Inclined. So we'll be back in about <laughs> four minutes, folks. And we'll be back with Tony Moran, Andrew Fletcher, myself and Jason. Hi, this is Lisa Tanner, and you're listening to Raconteur News. You're listening to raconteursnews.com. Stay tuned for more untwisted, unsweetened news. Please consider buying a T-shirt or making a donation to help support us. Thank you for your support. We do it for us all. And welcome back to Raconteurs News this uh, wonderful oh, oh, oh. Midsummer's Tuesday evening. Um, uh, I'm Andy Young. I'm joined as always by Jason Holmes. And uh, this evening we're absolutely delighted to welcome back Andrew Fletcher. And Andrew's been joined by Tony Moran, the WBF. Cruiserweight Boxing World Champion. Welcome back, guys. Do you want to see the belt? Oh, yes, please, mate. Yes, please. We'll put me smoothie down, won't we? This is going to make good radio. Yes. Yeah, well, it's... Um, I, I actually did a ninja show the other night. I was... Um, Jimmy called in and was talking to me, and we were actually discussing Linux, and he was showing me his setup, and how it all worked on a screen share. I'm sure that made blinding radio. <laughs> I've got two belts, but I'll just show you the world title one. Oh, I won, wow. Since I met Andrew, I've won, I've won two titles. That's incredible. I won an international title before the world title. Uh huh. And uh, he's now getting his belt out, and there it is. There it uh, is, out of the bag. That's where you can win a 42 with the aid of inclined bed therapy. Wow, that is absolutely well, incredible. Many other reasons why I won it, but I'm telling you now, if it wasn't for my health and it wasn't for meeting Andrew and Clive the Carl, they were the catalyst for that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I've done all the hard work, but I'm saying, I'm, I'm being honest when I say, obviously my coach was a massive influence, but before I met that coach and before I found the energy and the, the, the will to do it again, mm -hmm. I needed my health back. I didn't have my health. I'm the well, I'm it, healthiest I've ever been in my life. I've always been fit, but I haven't always been healthy. Hmm. Yeah, well, Tony, I, from my involvement with motorcycle racing, I mean, them, them guys are jumping off the bike sometimes at 180 mile an hour and they get up and walk away. Uh, most people can't imagine what it's like to jump off the roof rack of their car at 70 mile an hour, never mind 180. Ooh. And they've got incredible levels of fitness, but you were saying it's not all down to the inclined bed therapy. No, obviously not. You've got to train hard. You've got to work hard. You've got to have the right sort of mental discipline. But for any sportsman, if you can just get that slight edge, that's what makes the difference between the guys who make up the numbers and the guys who win the world championships, isn't it? Very accurate analysis, that, yeah. Yeah. So... Any sportsman in my position, not in my position, so that's the wrong way to put it. Any sportsman of any age should be doing this to get the edge. Mm -hmm. It'd be uh -huh. crazy not to. So, so free. And you need to design a, um, an inclined sports sort of recovery bed, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. sell, it, sell it for about 500 pounds to a thousand. You've got yourself in the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're sponsored by Raconteurs News. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? I just, I just, I just have a little dig that until, until you put a value on this, this amazing thing, then people just, just keep the blinkers on. I don't people know. will just miss it. Yeah, you're right. Like you guys have been ill, but sickness doesn't sell, does it? No, that's it. I mean, even though you, you two are a prime example of what inclined bed therapy can do for the ill person, 
sickness as themselves or unlucky. No, that's it, and and that that that's like I say again. The, the the great advantage of having you on is is saying, well, you don't have to be sick to use this because as soon as you mention therapy, people will think, oh, I'm not sick, I don't need therapy. But um, if it's something that improves your life, and um, it, it's improved mine and Jason's, I know for a fact beyond measure, and it certainly seems to have improved yours, Tony, and. Uh, Anyone out who's out there, I mean, I've got so many mates who've said to me, oh, yeah, I've got some bricks. I've got them all in a plastic bag, ready to put them in the bedroom. I just haven't got round to it yet. I'm saying, <laughs> come on, man. It did, yeah. Just like two-minute job. Just do it, and you, you'll feel the benefits. It, some people it takes a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but for, for me and my other half, we felt the benefits straight away. But we did notice more and more benefits as time went on. I'm a personal trainer as well, so I do the fighting. So all, all the clients that I, I've got, I try and encourage them to, with the help and the inclined bed therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, what, one client who had only known for one session, he was told me he suffered from an irritable bowel syndrome. Suffered from it for years, years. Suffered with it terribly. Couldn't go to the toilet for days at a time. One night of inclined bed therapy solved that problem. That person no longer has any any problem, any suffering. Wow. Why, wow. why wouldn't you want to try this? Why, the evidence is so, <laughs> so irrefutable. Do I look like a liar? Do I not see you like an honest person? Do you know what I mean? People are listening to politicians. The politicians on the telly talking about the EU referendum. <laughs> you might, every word that comes out of a politician's mouth, you might as well believe it's a lie, but... You look. People look at a man like Andrew K. Fletcher speaking, and you just you can't you can't you just can't be fair to see how 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 such of a man of substance he is. You know what I mean? Why aren't people listening to the the people like us? It's madness. Yeah. Yeah. Madness. Well, I've I've known several people um, when we've had Andrew on previous shows that it's regularly posted in the chat box that. Andrew, you're truly a genius. Now, I know Andrew yeah. Andrew kind of blushes and brushes it off and says, no, I'm not. But the amount of people's lives that you've actually changed, um, if you're not a genius, you need to think of a better title. I think he's a genius too. And you know what, knowing you, knowing you know what I love about Andrew, you know, you, when you tell him stories about how, how much inclined bed tell you about someone, you see emotion, you see real deep emotion in his face. That's what I love about him. Makes me a little bit emotional. <laughs> uh, I mean, my, my, my dream, my ambition is to have uh, parents put the kids on an incline, the babies, mm-hmm. you know, because there would be no more cot deaths. Now, I actually met uh, Dr. Shireen Chandler from the Foundation for Sudden Infant Death at her home in London. I was invited to go there. I took my little tubular experiments with me explained all about the discovery, how it applies to the body, why these babies shouldn't have been on a, on a flat bed. And she turned around to me, looked me in the face and said, my God, you've solved it. And I said, what do you mean I've solved it? I've solved how water gets to the top of the tree. She said, no, you've solved sudden infant death syndrome. You know, that's, and I'm thinking I've done enough, but nothing ever happened, you know, lots of excuses. Oh, you need to get involved with the university before we can fund you. You try and get a university involved, they don't want to know. You know, they're not invented here syndrome. So in the meantime, all of these kids are being put on uh, back their back to back to sleep campaign, which means you um, position your child in a in a bed with its um, sleeping on its back. And now there's an epidemic of um, misshapen heads. Because the kids have all been in one position, so they got like a flat back head mm-hmm. syndrome. You know, what? hello, they, you know, you need to rotate in bed. The same applies for us adults. You know, people have often asked me, oh, what's the best position to lie in? Your body will tell you. It'll tell you if you're uncomfortable. You'll need to turn over. Yeah. Listen to your body. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's an idea, Andrew, because... Um... Uh, our regular listeners know, uh, I, 
I'm not sure if I mentioned it to you, but um, myself and Tina became grandparents a few weeks ago. Now, um, we were talking to uh, Tina's daughter and, and she was saying, oh, you look so much better, Mum. What have you been doing? And because it was quite a troublesome pregnancy, she hadn't told her all about what we were doing, didn't want to kind of overload her brain with any more information. And when she told you, she went, oh, my God, why didn't you tell me about that? We're going to have to try that. I never even thought to say, well, we'll put Ollie's bed on an incline as well. Yes. But, yeah, um, them, them, them. I, I did find some, I found a couple of bits of evidence um, and during the research. Um, and there's a doctor in America, I forget, I forget what I found in the paper now, but he said he'd never had a single case of sudden infant death syndrome in the whole of his career. You know, all the people that were under his, under his uh, guidance. And he advised every single parent to put the child on an incline. You know, I actually wow. found that. And I sent that into the Foundation for Sudden Infant Death, and they dutifully ignored that as well. No worry in it, though, I, is there, Andrew? Say again? There's no worry in it for him. But well, why don't they, why would he, why would he deny people that the understanding of, of children of, of that age suffering like that? Well, if you've got no more sudden infant death syndromes, you don't need a foundation for sudden infant death, you know, death syndrome. And you know, that's why it's, people it's a, lose the jobs. It's a survival instinct, well, I suppose. Yes, and the man at the top who makes the decision whether to adopt such things or not is going to be the one on the biggest salary, probably 140, 150, 200,000 a year. He ain't going to want to lose his job, is he? If yeah, we don't go to the foundation, surely you go to people who would be interested in knowing this information? Like Mother Care. Not know. Tried it, yeah. I went everywhere with it. And and how are you going to prove it? The only way you can prove it is to advise mothers to, to put the, the kids on an incline. You know, I've, I've had the argument that people have said, well, you know, your, your baby could slip down the bed because it's on an incline, could end up with its head down. Just get a pair of dad's boxer shorts, tie them to the side of the bed, yeah, to the side of the, the cot, right, both sides. Drop the baby inside the box of shorts. Ain't going to budge. Ain't going to move anywhere. <laughs> Genius. Kids in boxer shorts, eh? Kids in dad's boxer shorts. Yes. yes. Yeah, but yeah, I, I did notice. I'm, it's, it's not really affected me, but um, I have had reports from people saying that they wake up at the bottom of the bed. Um, does that does do, do you eventually sort of people who do that do they eventually grow out of it or? Yeah, it, it, again, it's the body. I think is is it's just it's just such, such a shock to the system. You know, people think nothing's going to happen. But it does happen, and you know, perhaps they get a bit restless while they're fighting it, and but after a while, it just subsides, and you know, and I know what if you have to pull yourself up the bed a couple of times in the night, so what? You know, if you're going to get all them benefits, what the hell? Yeah, absolutely. But um, I remember something you did say for anyone who, who is having difficulty with that. If they take the top sheet off their bed, put a, an old duvet underneath it and put the that's top right. sheet back on, that little bit of give will stop them sliding down the bed that's, anyway. That's exactly right. That's, that's yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, it, even the blanket, you know, if you put a blanket and wrap the blanket tightly around the mattress so it's tucked in either side. And then put your bottom sheet back over the blanket. That extra bit of friction stops all the slipping. I think the problem really is that the mattresses are not actually designed to be inclined, are they? You know, we need to, to probably think about the design of a mattress. Mm -hmm. And we found that the best mattress to use so far has been a, a memory foam mattress. Mm. Yeah, because I've got I, a memory foam mattress. Yeah, right. it distributes the weight better and actually builds a little bit of a pocket for you to lie in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably why I don't find myself at the bottom of the bed. Yeah. Very often. I do sometimes, and uh, I did. I did notice that <laughs> I made I made the bed earlier on, um, and then when I went back in, it, the duvet had slipped <laughs> down the bed a bit, so, <laughs> off the bottom. So uh, yeah. I think I think that the you know the other thing is that people need to be aware of is it's probably not a good idea to wear underpants and underwear on an inclined bed because. 
you get one hell of a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my testosterone levels haven't dropped. <laughs> I'm not I'm not talking in a sexual nature. I'm talking in a combat nature. Right. My testosterone levels seem just as high as they did when I was young. So so what's next for you, Tony? I mean, where, where do you go from here? Where, what what's the next step? Excuse me, I've got a bit of A for you, I need to sniff. I've got no tissue. Excuse me, sorry about that. No worries, no. Eh, uh, I don't know. In terms of fighting, you mean in terms of each sport? Yeah, in, in terms of fighting, in, in terms of your future as well. I mean, things are obviously looking up a lot better than, than, than they have been. So, um, what, what, what's, what's your ambitions? I've what's your goals? Shitty, I've had a shitty few years, to be honest. Just, just to the mere um, problem of divorce, so... I'm starting to rebuild my life to the point where I'm enjoying life again now. Because obviously I need a home, I need a new home, a new partner and stuff. So things are on the up, but fundamentally I need, to inc- I need to be providing for the three children that I've got. I need to be providing for the partner that I'm going to be living with soon. So I need to be earning a living now. Unless I get offered decent money for taking nine weeks of my life out to go and fight again then. It needs to be a good payday, otherwise I'm, I'm trying to build a business and I'm doing very well in terms of building a business as a PT. Mm-hmm. So I can't just, if I put all that aside, I'm going to lose all my clients once I start. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, need, I need at this moment in time to be earning a living. Now, I've won the world title. I'm happy with that. There's much more I could do, but not at this moment in time. I need to put that on the back burner. My, my ultimate aim at the moment is just to get a home with my partner. Be settled, have my business running well, and then look at maybe fighting again. But you know what? You know, 43 in a, in a month, I, I believe I can go on for many more years. Very good. I'm better. I am genuinely better now to fight it than I have been at any other point in my life in all manner of ways. So that's just put a thought into my head, Tony. I'm just thinking, do you know what, what is the oldest ever boxing world champion? I'm not sure. I know Bernard Hopkins is a, is a is a a wonderful sort of example because he he is I mean he's beyond me in terms of boxing level mm-hmm. by what he's achieved. But as purely as a as a as a purest boxer, he's achieved so much. But he's he's an amazing and he was going on to like he was late forties and he's a, he's an ex- example of of just how how amazing you can be at at a late age because you know but all told that. Age is, is restricted, and um, mm. football is no football is probably going longer with these stuff. We're we're all, we're all conditioned to believe that you can't do things past a certain age. Conditioning mm. that's all it is mental conditioning. Mm. Look, at, do you know a guy called Wim Hof? No, I know the name. Man. You haven't checked Wim Hof out? Oh my god, he's amazing. Most unique human being on the planet is Wim Hof. He's a man in his fifties. He's he's doing feats of endurance and and stamina and just the craziest things you've ever imagined. Is this match. the ice? Is this the ice man? Ice man Wim Hof. He's an amazing. Yes. The most, yes, we were talking about him earlier. Yeah, oh, yeah. we were talking the about most, him before you came on, Tony. The most unique human being on the planet, and that's proven by science. Yes, but have you noticed, Tony, with your new understanding of posture, how he uses posture to maintain his body temperature? Oh yeah, there's no Pay doubt attention. About, no doubt about that man knows how the body works. He knows how to get the best out of the body, so I'm pretty sure he's definitely onto these um these elements of 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 gravity, how gravity works with your breathing. But um, do you know what? It's just just great. It's great to be part of this community. To be honest, with you. this was this was something alien to me two years ago. Mm. I'd never imagine I'd be sitting on a podcast. Talking to a, a genius scientist. Get off. Yeah, <laughs> Excuse what, me, but I'm not a scientist. Uh, <laughs> what, what am I? I, I was just trapped in the condition of of brainwashed world as anyone. And I was just wasn't it, I've always been a good guy, but I, you know, I was lost in lost in my own ego of the fight sports and all the nonsense that inner city life entails and all the influences that we have. And I just, I was lost. I was just lost in anyone. Two years ago, I found I found me help, and I found Andrew, and I found people like yourselves. And you know what? 
blows in it in a way that I've ever experienced before. But, but people like us come across are too boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what everyone yeah. looks at us like. When you got a belt like that, Tony, you're not boring at all, mate. Right? In, in, in the world I've just been talking about, in that false, shallow existence that, that I've lived 40 years until I found these things, that I can now carry on giving evidence of, but from a different viewpoint, if that makes sense. Yes. I, I still influence people in that world, I suppose, because of what I've achieved as a fighter, I think. So it's hopefully, hopefully. We yeah. had a little bit of a chat with Mark, who came down with you to meet me. Yeah, that was a great day for me, by the way. Yeah, really yeah. enjoyed, really enjoyed you guys coming down to meet me. Has Mark been on this this podcast tonight? No, he hasn't. No, but oh, Mark, he'd Mark, be a great fella to have one. Mark, he, he, yeah, he would. Yeah. He, but, Mark, yeah, sorry, go on. Mark, Mark's going to try and get a. We were talking about a famous football team that, that, that has the colour red, and yeah. uh, Mark was going to try and get them, uh, or try and talk to the manager, or even the trainer, to uh, to get the uh, incline bed implemented there. Has there been any any development with that? Yes. Sorry, I'm trying to see that now. Yeah. What what it is with Mark is that he's he's a, he's a he's a good guy, but he's got a lot of influence in terms of. The world he's in, he's in the music world, he's in the fashion world and stuff. But he, he's a good friend and he's a believer, as you can tell. I I I basically just tell anyone I care about about Clive and Andrew, and then I let them make their own decision now. But Mark Mark was in, um, interested in meeting both of them because he's had the benefits that I have had. So he's a good guy. He wants to he wants to spread the word. He wants to help. So people like Mark on board. Are good, the good influencers. They know how to sell. They know about branding. They know about, you know, he's, he's got a very successful business and he knows how he knows how to run businesses. So people like that are on board are, are, are massively helpful as well. Because mm-hmm. one, they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Two, they're doing it just to, to give something back to people like yourself, Andrew and Clive. You know what I mean? So more people like us are involved. More good guys sharing and caring and. And showing a bit of love to humanity then. Yes. Same, same with Andy and Jason here. You know, yeah, of course. I'm not, not leaving you guys out to that. I don't know you well enough to just comment, but you know, I, I'm just, I'm just giving an example. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're all, we're all, we're all on the same, on the same path, I suppose. And mm-hmm. We're all trying to uh, just spread the word because it's a good way to spread. Oh, but that's funny enough. Get, get, listen to this one. Mark starting a newspaper called the Word. Okay. So it'd be good for you guys if you cut with him because maybe you can do your own your own section or something. I don't know. That's to speak to Mark because I have got another full run of it, but that'd be interesting. That'd be another great opportunity. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to speak to Mark. He sounds like the the sort of person uh, that that we're always striving to speak. I mean, we're getting people from all over the world joining us and a couple of months ago we had Max Egan from. Uh, Peru. Uh, we had Zen Gardener talking to us from Uruguay. Um, we last week we had um, the global legend that is Rick Simpson talking to us from Croatia. And next month we've got a guy called uh, Steve Smith who's joining us from Colorado, and he treats pets with CBD cannabis oil. Oh yeah, I've been I've been seeing a lot of results. With that as well. Ah, well, got news for you there, Tony. Um, if you want to try it, mate, we've started making our own. So uh, if you want a bottle to try, drop me your address when we finish the show and I'll send you a bottle over to try. Uh, has yours got the THC taken out of it? There is no THC in it, yeah. Because the, the THC makes you, is the one that gets you high, but it also yeah. has other benefits. Obviously, for what you're doing, um, it might be a bit of a problem, um, but um, Rick Simpson's oil is the one with THC. That's the one that um, we'd recommend to anyone taking who's got cancer, mm-hmm. um, because we, we've um, most of us seen the film Run from the Cure, and the the healing effects, not just for cancer, but, but for other things as well, is incredible. Um, but we've actually got another question from Red Robin. They've thrown some brilliant questions in there. Um, I hope you'll come back and join us regularly on Raconteurs News because uh, some great questions. 
uh, they're saying that they've just watched the movie Vaxxed and was curious. Have there been any reports of incline bed therapy helping individuals with autism, Andrew? Uh, it's not a condition that I've, I've looked into, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, guilty as charged, you know. To, I mean, the the the, uh, the avenues that I've chosen has been predominantly multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, um, cerebral palsy, spinal cord injury, complete spinal cord injury, uh, psoriatic arthritis, and you know, there's 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 lots of other conditions. The um, um, uh, what was that sh shoulder problem that Tina had? The, the... oh it, yeah, Tina. Had as fibromyalgia and fibromyalgia uh, yeah and it's it's done wonders to help with that yeah yeah so so unfortunately i haven't i, I you know i would love to investigate every condition there is mm. but i just just don't have the, the time or the capacity to do it yeah you're just one man yeah so uh, mm, it'd be interesting to, to see what whether that does help um I'm pretty sure that uh, there's been some positive results on autism with the CBD oil, actually. And uh, that's something uh, we, we're looking into the ins and outs of it and the possible legal implications. But um, myself and Super Kev, who books the guest on, we, we've done a few extractions now and we've made some oil, we've made some salve to to rub into you wherever it hurts and uh, it's very effective it, the stuff we're making at home actually seems to be more effective than the stuff we've bought online that seems to be that's supposed to be stronger so if we can do it um, without causing too many waves then that's something we'll be looking at selling it might be on the RN site, or perhaps we'll have a, a separate website and link to that. But uh, oh, they can meet us back at library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know you will never feel those jealous again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, listen, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, yeah. What uh, the, I, I was speaking, I went and met up with Tony Farrell in Sheffield a couple few weeks ago, um, and. While we while I was just having a brief meeting with him before he came on our on our show, um, it, he got a friend with him, and I I was uh, telling Tony about inclined bed therapy, and the guy who was with him, his friend, his his mate said, Oh, I've done, I've been doing that. Uh, I read it in, and he set up a magazine. So there's there's been quite a big article in the magazine. Has that been the Nexus magazine? The Nexus magazine. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, they did a four-page spread on it. Very good, very good article. There's uh, another article coming out shortly in New Pathways magazine, which is a, uh, a multiple sclerosis magazine. So this is a follow-up article, yeah, from one that went out in 2010. So we get we're getting coverage, yeah, and it, it's reaching it's reaching the part that uh, broadsheets and you know and um, and the um, the gutter press can't reach, yeah. But it was the first time that I'd ever come across anybody that, when I'd mentioned it, knew what I was talking about, but I'd not been the one that told them about it, if you know what I mean, or, or yeah. it wasn't somebody who told me. You know, it was, and, and that was quite interesting that, that there are people out there that, it, that it's this, this information is reaching. Yes, there are. Well, thanks to you guys as well, you know, because the Nexus magazine came about because of, um, interviews on radios <laughs> ironically so yeah it, it, it's it's a snowball you need the pr agents andrew yeah sure i'm not even joking i'm half i'm only half joking when i say that seriously though the, these people who do those jobs they know how to get stuff branded and they know how to get stuff yeah in, indeed in consciousness and any awareness and maybe i'm i'm I've got a few people now who I'm, who I'm working with as personal training clients who are in those worlds, and I've I've asked them to to the incline the beds, and they have, and they're getting results. So hopefully the next question to them will be, well, do you think there's something worth backing in terms of, of mm. PR? You know, it's, it yeah. is all about the, it is all about the sales, isn't it? not the sales as in terms of monetary sales, in terms of selling, selling the idea. Selling the idea and the wonders of it, and 
you only need that one door open and it will kick off. One person, one door open, and that could be that could be all all that's needed. Mm. I'm just going to put my light on because I'm, I'm looking at my picture there. I'm, it's getting a bit dark. Oh yeah. What, what what time are you running this for, guys? Um, well, we've got about 20 minutes left, haven't we? Uh, well, we we normally um, cut off after two hours, but um, if you want to run a bit over that, we we've, we've got a full third hour we can go into, so um, we're quite happy to keep going. I, I don't know if I'm asking that because I haven't eaten all day, and I'll be happy to finish that ten if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be that'd be that'd be that'd be idea. Just that That's me missus just me missus just sent me a text from down the stairs asking what I want for me tea. <laughs> 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 if you don't get me order in now, I'm not gonna get nothing. Yeah, so come on, what's a world champion having for his supper, Tony? Well I'm 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 vegetarian now, which is again something I would never have believed I was gonna uh, what I wouldn't have ever believed went down this path. But anyway, the, the best way I can explain is two years ago when I found me health. I realised that I wasn't going to change overnight, so I just I done the drip drip effect, and on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, I just gradually changed all my habits. So where I'm now, just a, an elixir of use, uh, elixir of health. Sorry, having a having a drink and eat, I would just say is healthy. Mm. I don't put badness in my body anymore. I've got full, uh, I've got full choice over the food that I put in my body. And it doesn't be, it doesn't come at any any cost of willpower if that makes sense. My no. body's just changed. I've just done that. I've got a naturally healthy body that just desires goodness, doesn't desire sugar, doesn't desire junk food. I don't even get it for my kids anymore. I've retra- I'm retraining my kids too. That's the be- that's the most beautiful thing for me. I'm giving so like kebab and chips then. No, I still give them occasional. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna have to become like a monk. He's just not going to give them anything. But I have reduced. I've re- I don't get them fast food no more, apart from a pizza. Good on you, mate. I've stopped them eating those American sweets with all the colours in. And I'm, but I'm educating them as to why. I'm not just saying them, you're not having it. I'm, we sit down and have discussions and education and have fun about it as well. And you, don't, you know what? Kids don't mind. I think, I think one of the one of the best things I did for my granddaughters was to, to educate them on growing their own food. You know, and because we've got our own organic garden, yeah, yeah. Um, so we taught them, you know, this is where the food comes from, and consequently, they love vegetables. Mm. Yeah, but it's the quality of those vegetables that's yeah, important. of course, yeah. because they're organic, grown in your own soil. That's yes. the, What are you two like on your health, Andy and Jason? Um, well, for me, um. I I um I tried to go along with my partner when she she went for the um some people call it no carbs. Dr. Sarah Mayer who came on with us a, a while back calls it ketogenic diet. And to be honest, I kind of slipped off that. Sorry, but, ketogenic. But I, sorry. Ketogenic. Ketogenic. Oh, right. Okay, sorry. and and. I'm not following it a hundred percent, but my partner does. It's improved her health, and that that's just basically doing away with all carbohydrates from your diet. So you can eat as much um, meat and vegetables as you want. Just don't eat sugar, potatoes, pasta, stuff like that. And I was really surprised. I thought, oh my god, no potatoes, no bread. I'm going to really miss that. But uh, when we got started on that, and uh, we we just used to have some meat and vegetables uh, as a main meal, and you can eat as many veggies as you like, eat as much meat as you like as well, and uh, you don't miss it. I mean, uh, the only time I ever eat bread, we, we never have bread in the house, the only time I eat bread is if I go away and there's nothing to eat but a bacon sandwich or something like that, I'll eat it. And, you know... The odd bit here and there is not a problem. It's it's when you live day to day on those sorts of things. Andy, I'm gonna retrain you on your health. I'm gonna I'm gonna I can I can offer you some really good guidelines of off, off here, you know. Oh yeah. That I think that benefit you. You need to cut the bacon out, mate. Cut the bacon out. Yeah, I think so. Ah right. I'll show you some pictures as to why. I'm, 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 I'm gonna joke. But now you know what, do whatever as you wish. But there's, there's a 
there's a fundamental rule that there's 91 essential minerals, vitamins, amino acids, and essential fatty acids that our bodies require on a daily basis yeah. to be well, for the immunity to be well, for your mind to be well, for everything to be well. So if you're putting those 91 essential minerals and vitamins in on a daily basis and then sleeping in an inclined bed, woo, <laughs> you're going to be abundant, boy. Selling you. Sky's the limit, yeah. Selling you. That's what I do. That, that's my living philosophy now, and I'm abundant because of it. Mm-hmm. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. Excellent. Well, um, to be fair, you did ask us the booster question, so Kate, um, Jason, it's your turn to answer now. About my diet? I well, think it was I, about... I'm coming from a place where I've not really eaten anything for like six months, really, and that, nothing. So what I'm eating at the what I'm doing at the moment is if I feel like eating something I'm eating I'm eating, and, and it doesn't matter what it is. But I I do have a, a a pretty good diet. So we do eat a lot of uh, fresh vegetables, things like that. We don't eat a lot of fatty foods. We do occasionally. I do like a bacon sandwich, and I know uh, Tony's not going to really approve of that. But um, I I'll do. Make you open. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like the odd occasional sam, uh, sandwich, but like I say, I'm in this situation where uh, just seeing me eat is just is is good enough for for you know for my wife and things like that, and, and yeah, just being able to eat and having a, a full stomach. So, of course. my my, my we, but I remember a time when we were having this kitchen done a couple of years ago, uh, and we were on takeaways for all week because we got got the, nothing. We we got no kitchen. It was being completely rebuilt, uh, and by the end of it, your body's craving some vegetables, isn't it? It's like craving goodness. You've, you've got yeah. to listen to your body. You've got to listen to it, and it's it's craving vegetables. And and just think about it. it never really craves a a kebab, or it never really craves. You know, you just perhaps fancy a kebab or a pizza or something like that. But yeah, but we don't know, eat. We don't eat for. We shouldn't eat for taste. We should, well, we should, but we should. We should eat for nutrition. We don't eat for that that sugary, salty, fatty taste, do we? That's not what we're at. But our bodies crave energy and crave nutrition. But we've been conditioned to buy so many things that don't even contain food to to solve that. Food most, like most, most food contain does not contain food. <laughs> What I mean, it's just I don't know. It's, it's each to their own. I'm not trying to get on a soapbox, but I'm telling you now, look at look after your diet and get your bed inclined. And it's it's about balance as well, isn't it? Like change. Okay. Yeah, eighty twenty rules a good rule, isn't it? It, it? I mean, if you're if you're a boxer, I mean, the nutrition and the, all this stuff. I mean, you're into keeping fit and uh, nah, doing doing nah. your exercise and all that sort of thing. So that nutrition thing is really important. But nah. it's about balance. I mean, I can't walk very far, so. Uh, you know, I, I can't do all that exercise, so I have to sort of balance out what I what I can, you know, what I can and can't eat. That has no walking chains at all, Chase. Uh, it's now well, it did for a, for a couple of days, but now it's it sort of seems to have regressed a little bit. Uh, but I'm that, I'm expected I've, I've expected that the. Uh, it, it it's not been it's not been right for well for three years now it's nearly three years since I've had this blood clot in this leg. Yeah, Jason. Yeah. What about if you just overwhelmed your body with health in terms of what you put in your mouth and what was going inside your body? Would do you think that ever could have any effect on on the illness that you you've got? Well, I, uh, look. Anything that would help. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm willing to try anything. It's uh, you know sometimes you get the, I, I, you know I feel so well at the moment that I don't I feel like I, I should be counting my blessings and not rather you know trying to push myself to towards something that might make me feel a bit different in another way. If I change my diet too much, I might start having problems with me. You know. Yeah, it's, with, it's with, the key. It's the key to it though. You don't have to change nothing. You just have to add a few a few choice um, supplements. Mineral salts, vitamins, that's all you got to do. Just add to what you're already doing. So you add you to- see, I, I've also got to be careful with things like that because I have to, I'm have. i on warfarin and my uh, my blood has to be two and a half times thinner than yours. So And it has to be monitored as well. And there are these supplements and things like that can have an effect on your INR. Min- um, minerals I, I, and vitamins, you mean? Sorry? 
do you mean minerals and vitamins, carbon effect? Yeah, yeah, on your iron ore, yeah, definitely, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they they can have an effect on your on your your iron ore, and if, sometimes my blood went to uh, six point five one time, which was like six and a half times thinner than than a normal person's blood, and, and it were really quite scary. And it was it was simply because uh, I'd I'd taken something that I I shouldn't have taken, that I'd had something that I shouldn't have had. It, it, I think it was some broccoli or something ridiculous. Really, yeah. With, with, with oh, vitamin K. K, yeah. Yeah, vitamin K, yeah. yeah. Have you had Clive the Carl on the show? We had Clive on uh, way back, yeah, but we've had him on, yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, because he, he'd answered a few of those questions. Uh-huh. Besides what, what you're getting from the, uh, from the bed therapy, maybe with the nutritional side as well, that could have a double effect. I find this had a double effect for me, anyway. Yeah. But obviously, I'm not suffering from any illnesses, and I'm open to prevent them by carrying this on. Mm-hmm. Well, it, yeah, for, for me, my major health problem is I fell off a house when I was 19 years old and uh, got compression fractures in his spine. So um, I, I managed to get fairly fit again. I got fit enough to join the Army and the Marines, although they didn't want me, thank goodness. Um, I... I I drove a truck for 22 years long distance before I had to pack up. And now it is it's just the slowing down with age and the fact that the, 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 the crushed spine is, is, is causing me problems. But that's kind of been alleviated quite a lot but with Andrew's help. And also the fact we've discovered this um, CBD oil. And I know for a fact if I could get hold of some proper Rick Simpson oil, I could be completely pain free in a matter of about 10 or 15 minutes. I've, I've actually managed to get some to try once and just a grain of rice sized piece on the end of my finger, took it like that, 10 minutes later, no pain. Why can't you get it regular? Um, because it's it's um, legally in the same class as heroin. Sure it is. Yeah. Why? Well, I would imagine because of the curative powers that it has. Oh, you're not allowed to say cure, are you? Because of the healing powers that it has. And uh, it makes people well from all kinds of things, which cost thousands of dollars to, to just throw drugs at. And if you oh, stop yeah, and... it's all conspiracy, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah, you'll, absolutely. You'll have to drive to Liverpool one day. I'm sure I'll be able to um, point you in the direction. That sounds really good, Tony. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I'd love sign, to... There's all signs all over Liverpool. I said, just go left for this and go right for that. <laughs> I could have picked some up. I was here in, in April. In, in not, Liverpool. not to do with me. I'm not going to get roped in on a conspiracy charge. <laughs> <laughs> roped in? Oh, good one. The boxing is back. The analogy is right. roped in. <laughs> that was a week Those ropes are made of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, did, you got to do what you got to do when you're um, when you're suffering, haven't you? Yes, you are. I did see you were after um, getting a car sorted out, Tony. Have you got that sorted? Oh, Michelle's out on Facebook, you mean? Yeah. I was just asking. I, I use Facebook. It's such, such, such a great resource. You know, it's fantastic. Met such good people on there. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I just put any questions I have, I put them on from Facebook. Because I always get them answered, and I always get them answered with, with death. A lot of good people in the uh, social media community. There are, yeah, yeah. A lot, the, of good people, a lot of good people out there willing to help. That's what. Kind of that, me lady coming in to give me a kiss with my. Oh, brilliant! Oh, yeah, yeah that's the pizza. That's one thing that I found <laughs> since we've been doing this. Um, it's kind of restored my faith in human nature because there are so many people out there that that try and help you in whatever way they can. And uh, we've just got a, a, a fantastic team of people all helping us. I mean, we've got two guys who used to be do a radio show of their own. Um, they're not doing that at the minute. They, they're thinking about coming and joining us. But in the meantime, they're building us a new streaming service and a radio player to put on our, our um, website. So um, all of, all those of you that are having frustrations with our site because we're broadcasting through Spreaker at the minute, 
that in the very near future will hopefully be sorted because we're we're already testing the new product out and it should be along in the next week or so hopefully so nice. big thanks to jimmy and nick who are working away hard in that on that in the background and how many, to how, many, how many regular listeners have you got would you say um well it's very difficult to know because google tell lies and so do spreaker and um, i but when you look at it, they're both in the business of selling you advertising. So it makes sense for them to play down your statistics. Right. And then when you give them some advertising bumps, they'll bump your statistics up. Um, but we, you know, uh, Google are telling us that since we started the website, we've had about 55,000 hits. Yet when you look at the internet hosting website uh, web statistics, we're just short of 15 million. So there's really? a bit, bit of a discrepancy there, isn't there? Where's the 15 million figure from, sorry? That's the number of uh, hits we've had on the website since uh, we started it in January, but it didn't really go live. Sorry, we started in December, but it didn't really go live until January. You're being, you're being observed and watched and listened to then, aren't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We know, um, I mean, uh, very lucky tonight that Skype's behaving itself, but some guests who are talking now about particularly controversial subjects, we do have an absolute nightmare on Skype. And, I mean, people say, oh, you're getting, you're getting um, paranoid that people are listening on Skype. I've had two instances in recent days where I've been mentioning something quite unusual, something I would never, ever talk about to someone over Skype. And then I click on Facebook and there's an advert for what I've just been talking about two minutes earlier. Yeah, the feds are watching. Yeah. and I'll, I'll probably open my door in the morning and get, get carted away for this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, Tony. Who cares, anyway? I'd rather, I'd rather go fight on me. Oh, that's it. I mean, um, the, the system is screwed up and uh, we're all under pressure. Um, I don't know. Maybe we might not be able to, to win through, but um, I'm, I'm quite prepared to die trying if we don't. Oh, yeah. You've got to fight. You've got to fight a good fight, haven't you? Mm -hmm. once you? Once you wake up, which I'm fine with, with friends, but once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. No, mm -hmm. absolutely. On, on your health, on all you know whatever I've, I've left all the conspiracy i'm not the reason i got into me health because the conspiracy stuff was driving me insane yeah i was lying there with my two children thinking how, how, can, how can this world be so twisted and what, whatever anyway i'm not going to go on but yeah. the point i'm making is i thought i've got to do something that's positive i'm positive as health environment and giving other people the health i'm, I'm, I'm passionate on and I'm, I'm passionate about it now and i'm, I'm loving it mm. Well, um, I noticed you, you said you had to go for your dinner at 10 o'clock and we're very nearly there. So I'd like to say a massive thank you from myself and all our listeners to Tony Moran for joining us tonight and to Andrew Fletcher, the man who made it all possible. And um, just you guys are absolutely amazing. And uh, anything I can learn from you, Tony, I'd be more than happy to learn it. So Where do you, you live, Andy? Me, I live at Boston, over on the East Coast. Right, okay. Me, me and Mark Bellaby do a visit to you soon. We, we love going on our little uh, health road trips. Where, about, where are you, Jason, in Sheffield? I'll tell you what, you can meet at our house. It's about right. halfway between. Yeah, that's that's right. Bang in the middle. We're, we're, doing, little, we're doing little health road shows, me and Mark. So we're, uh, and Mark Just, will be a good guy to have on, on your show, I think. Just a, just a little... Uh, just a little side thing uh, i've just had a little message from heath uh, uh, by the way happy birthday heath for tomorrow happy birthday um, happy trondance to you uh, uh but he said uh great show um is he is he voting uh, remain or leave <laughs> is who voting remain or leave well uh, we'll, we'll put that out to both of you yeah i'm voting leave i'm a leave type of guy I, I think I've got a I've got a bit of a hunch that if this they fix this, then um, th there'll be a revolution because it, it it's so obvious that everybody's voting. I, I don't know anybody that's voting in Maine. Don't know anybody. No. 
No, well, that's for another show, I think. That absolutely is. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening tonight. And thanks for all the wonderful questions from the chat room. Uh, great to see some new faces in there. And we'll be back for a, a one-off special tomorrow night um, because we couldn't do a, an update last month with Paul, our high-level financial insider. So we've said we'll do one with him tomorrow night. That'll be on at 8 o'clock on raconteursnews.com. And then Thursday night, we've got a return visit from author John Hamer. And he'll be talking about his new book that's out. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about that one because we'll be covering the banking industry, one of our favourite oh. subjects. So with that, I'll say thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Jason, as always. Yes. And... Um, Thank you to everyone for listening, because if it weren't for you, we'd just be wafting away to ourselves. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow night and uh, wish you all a good evening. Yeah, please give us your feedback. If you're trying to incline bed therapy, we need your feedback. Oh, Most yes. important. Please yeah. do that. And anyone who listens to this, you can uh, contact Andrew through his Facebook page or uh, his Incline Bed Therapy Facebook group, or on his website at www.inclinedbedtherapy.com. And uh, you can leave testimonials on there so that other people can share your experiences. Nice one, and Hey, Tony. Respect, big man. Yes, um, you always know that. Much love, sir. Okay. Right. Hello, it's been, it's been an honour. I'll uh, hopefully speak to you again in the future, privately or publicly. It doesn't matter to me. That would be great, Tony. I look forward to it. It's been nice to, to meet, you, meet you in person as well, Jason. I mean, that'll be good. You enjoy your dinner. We'll meet up soon again, uh, I yeah. hope. And uh, we've got another song to play out with. And what's this one? This one, not quite as appropriate as the last one. This one's called Raise Your Head. So thanks and good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.